Am I a dumb person? No, I don't think so. Do I act dumb from time to time? Heck yeah! When you're learning a language for quite some time, it's perfectly normal to just look back at the journey and think, hmm, I would have done this and this and this differently. So today I'm sharing mistakes I made while studying English for 20 years, so you could learn from them and become fluent in English much, much faster. Let's jump into it! Mistake number one – being inconsistent. Well, what is being consistent? For me, from my experience, it's studying on a regular basis, actually on a daily basis, making English an integral part of your life. I couldn't understand that for the longest time, so I studied English at school. Yeah, for 10 years. And we translated things, we learned vocabulary, learned grammar. And after 10 years of like two hours a week, I couldn't speak, I couldn't write English, I couldn't understand native speakers, nothing. So I could read a little bit and I knew quite a few words. But that was it. And at university, the same thing. Two years of practically nothing. Twelve years of studying English were a bust for me. Because I wasn't studying on my own. I wasn't consistent. I wasn't making English my priority. It wasn't that important to me. I've learned the importance of English much later. Eight years ago, in 2013, I decided to pick up a book. And it was a great experience. My vocabulary was good enough to read a simple book. And then I started listening to podcasts with very slow English. It was great. I saw the first results. And for a few years, I read and listened to quite a lot of materials. However, I remember experiencing the major burst of growth for my language skills in two years, in 2017 and 2020. So in 2017, I decided to take IELTS and I started really studying, like I studied every single day for months. It was like half a year maybe of consistent studying. And in 2020, I started working on my pronunciation skills and my speaking skills and I hosted conversation groups on a regular basis, two or three times a week. So I know that doing something on a regular basis helps, even though sometimes I didn't see the results right away. I just was patient and tried to do this. Even, even if it was challenging, even when it was really, really tough emotionally to continue doing something when you don't see the results. The results came. Now I'm a much better speaker, I'm a much better writer because of those hours and hours I spent doing something on a regular basis and forming habits. Like with reading. I love books and I read on a regular basis. But sometimes I can't say that I'm in a reading slump. It's when you're not reading for a while because of like reasons. But I notice that if I'm not reading every single day, then I lose concentration much more easily when I'm actually reading. And I lose motivation to continue if this book is challenging. And my attention span is so short. So that is why I'm trying to read daily, maybe a few pages, but it really works. When I stop studying on a regular basis, I immediately notice the bad effects it has on me. So I lose motivation. I lose concentration. I cannot concentrate really hard on my studies. And I procrastinate. Ooh, I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> if I don't have this backbone of my studies, I don't have a plan, and I don't have this habit of studying. So I watch TV shows and YouTube. I watch Korean dramas, 
And then I hate myself for spending so much time on something besides my studies. And I blame myself after that so that I could feel a bit better. I go and watch the same stuff again. And then I hate myself. Then I watch it again. So it's a constant loop. <laughs> so, yeah. It sucks. There is one thing that doesn't help consistency and it's mistake number two. Lack of planning. I didn't plan until 2017. I thought it was quite useless. But it wasn't. It actually was a game changer for me. I boosted my motivation to study because I actually needed to sit down and think about my goals. My whys. Why did I want to study English? Why did I want to improve? What did I need to do to actually do that? I sat down and created my first plan. It wasn't easy. It didn't come naturally to me. But with time, I've tried different methods and I've improved significantly. Right now, I usually create several plans. So my biggest plan is for three months. Then I create a plan that is for the next month, a monthly plan, then a weekly plan with many, many, many daily tasks. So I try to create tiny, tiny tasks so that I could check them and feel accomplished. Planning really helped me with productivity. And I did so many tasks that moved my English forward. And also, I didn't succumb to this I don't feel like studying mindset very often, as often as I used to when I didn't have a plan. Actually, for the last month, I haven't been creating any plans for my language studies. And it really took a toll on the languages and the way I move forward. I don't move. I don't do a lot. Uh, I And I lose motivation to study, to form new habits, because I don't have a plan. I don't have this direction. I don't know how to move forward, because where is forward? Mistake number three. No regular speaking and writing practice. As I was saying, in 2013, I started consuming content in English. So I devoured books, podcasts, blog posts, um, audiobooks, I don't know, TV shows, YouTube content, everything. I consumed so much content, but it was passive consumption. And it was under this illusion that it would really help my English to become much, much better that I would become a fluent English speaker but just passively consuming content without the necessity to actually speak or write. After so many years of consuming content in English, it was a really eye-opening experience to be told that your speaking and your writing suck. I wanted to take IELTS and one teacher just uh, assessed my speaking and writing and it was, they were bad because I never spoke and I never written anything. So in order to improve my speaking and writing skills, I became an active learner. <laughs> I started writing comments on Facebook, I started writing essays, I talked to people, I communicated in English, and I became better with time. And taking this IELTS exam shattered this illusion that I don't need to improve my active skills. Passive skills were enough. No, they weren't. And when it comes to exams, IELTS, TOEFL, any other exam, they usually have four major parts. So speaking, writing, reading, and listening. And it's not a coincidence, because every single skill is a separate skill that needs to be honed separately. Yes, they're interconnected, they're 
influence each other, but they're separate skills. And if a person is really good at listening, he or she can be very bad at speaking or writing. And some people spend years to really get this seven in writing because they get those really high scores in reading and listening in passive skills, but their active skills are not great because they're not working on them. So even though I'm an advanced English learner, I still find it really tough <laughs> to speak. I find it tough to write on a regular basis. And sometimes I just need to force myself a little bit to uh, invest a little more time and effort into this to push myself out of this comfort zone where I can just watch TV shows and read books. But no, I actually need communication with other people that I enjoy. But it's, it's tough. It can be really tough. I'd love to hear from you guys and I'm really curious to know what is your goal for studying English? What do you want to achieve in the near future? Thank you so much for watching. Don't repeat my mistakes. Learn from them. And I'll see you next time with some awesome language content. See ya!